Australia's defense policy is entering a new phase. For decades, Canberra relied heavily on imported precision weapons, mainly from the United States, to sustain its deterrence capability. But that dependency is changing. In October 2025, Australia and the US signed a joint statement of intent to begin local production of the guided multiple launch rocket system before the end of 2025. It marks the first tangible step of the Guided Weapons and Explosive Ordnance Enterprise, a national effort to give Australia an independent missile manufacturing base. This decision is not just about rockets. It reflects a shift in national thinking, away from being a client state that buys deterrence toward being a regional power that can build and sustain it. The war in Ukraine exposed the fragility of global munitions supply chains. The U.S. itself is struggling to meet the demands of its own stockpiles. For Australia, positioned at the edge of the Indo-Pacific, the message was clear. In a crisis, imported weapons might arrive too late. Under the GWEO framework, Canberra intends to produce guided weapons, explosives, and components domestically. The initiative, valued at more than $4 billion, is spread across a network of defense industrial sites, Mulwalla in New South Wales, Benalla in Victoria, and a new integration hub expected near Brisbane. Lockheed Martin Australia and BAE Systems will handle technology transfer, while local suppliers develop the energetics and warhead sections. If successful, it could create hundreds of technical jobs and anchor a new high-technology export sector. At the center of the plan is the GMLRS, a 227mm rocket that can strike targets between 70 and 150 kilometers with meter-level precision. Fired from the HIMARS and M270 launchers, it gives the Australian Army a reach it has never possessed. The next step is the Precision Strike Missile, a longer-range successor capable of exceeding 500 kilometers and, eventually, striking moving naval targets. When combined with air launch standoff weapons and the future AUKUS submarines, these missiles will allow Canberra to project credible deterrence across northern Australia and into the surrounding seas. The industrial dimension is as important as the military one. Every Australian government since 2019 has promised to rebuild sovereign manufacturing capacity. COVID-19 and supply chain shocks turned that rhetoric into necessity. Missile production fits perfectly with the government's economic narrative, defense spending that also creates skilled employment. The GWEO enterprise aligns with the slogan, Build Here, Defend Here. For the public, that message resonates. It combines national security, self-reliance, and industrial pride. Yet behind the optimism lie complex technical and political challenges. Missile manufacturing is not just assembly work. It requires advanced precision engineering, clean room environments, and strict safety regimes for explosives. Australia will depend on U.S. approval for key components such as seekers, guidance chips, and solid fuel propellants. If Washington restricts technology transfer, production could stall. The risk of a screwdriver industry, where Australia bolts together imported parts without mastering the core know-how, remains high. Strategically, the move sends a message to both allies and adversaries. To allies, it signals that Australia is ready to shoulder more of the collective defense burden, rather than simply host bases or buy American systems off the shelf. To adversaries, chiefly China, it indicates that Australia intends to sustain its own stockpiles and support prolonged operations if deterrence fails. Still, producing missiles at home will not be cheap. Local manufacturing can cost several times more than imports, at least in the early years, and critics argue the funds might be better spent on cyber defense or space surveillance. Politically, the project enjoys bipartisan support, but questions linger about cost control and strategic coherence. The Defense Strategic Review called for focused lethality rather than sprawling procurement, yet GWEO adds another major industrial program to an already overstretched budget. 
the government justifies it by pointing to job creation and export potential, suggesting that Australia could, in time, supply missiles to regional partners such as Japan, South Korea, or the Philippines. That ambition, however, will depend on export approvals from the U.S. and the maturity of local industry. There are also moral and diplomatic dimensions. As Australia becomes an arms manufacturer, it will face scrutiny over where those weapons go and how they are used. Public attitudes toward defense spending are generally positive when tied to national security, but skepticism grows when military exports enter unstable regions. Managing transparency, accountability, and adherence to international arms control norms will be crucial to maintaining domestic legitimacy. Despite the hurdles, the strategic rationale is solid. In the event of regional conflict, logistics chains could be cut and imports delayed. A small but steady domestic output ensures readiness and flexibility. Moreover, co-production with the U.S. deepens industrial interdependence, complementing AUKUS's nuclear submarine pillar with a conventional weapons pillar. It diversifies deterrence. Australia does not need to match major powers missile for missile. It needs the ability to respond decisively and sustain operations independently. Looking ahead to 2030, the success or failure of GWEO will shape the next generation of Australian defence policy. If the enterprise delivers functional, affordable missiles by the latter half of the decade, Australia could become a regional hub for guided munitions manufacturing. Local engineers would gain expertise transferable to drones, space systems and hypersonic projects. The broader economy would benefit from dual-use innovation. But if the program falters due to technology bottlenecks, political turnover, or budget overruns, it could reinforce the perception that Australia aspires to autonomy it cannot afford. Ultimately, this is about more than missiles. It is about sovereignty and credibility. Nations that can build their own weapons wield a different kind of influence. They decide how and when to use force, rather than waiting for permission. For Australia, investing in guided weapon production is an act of strategic self-definition, a statement that the country intends to shape its security environment, not merely endure it. The GWEO enterprise embodies both promise and peril. It offers a pathway toward industrial maturity and stronger deterrence, but also exposes Australia to new dependencies and costs. Whether it becomes a cornerstone of national defense or another overambitious program will depend on execution, political will, and public patience. In the end, the question is not simply whether Australia can build missiles. It is whether Australia can build the kind of defense ecosystem that keeps those missiles relevant, affordable, and under sovereign control. If Canberra succeeds, Made in Australia will mean more than a label it will signify a nation ready to defend itself by its own hands.